<laughs> awesome. So uh, before we jump into the presentation, just a quick fun thing. Uh, if you do me a favor, everybody sort of on this half of the room, okay, on the count of three, uh, if you would make a, a sound like you just saw something that was really impressive and you were kind of like this, like, ooh, like that, okay? On the count of three, do that for me just on this side of the room. One, two, three. Ooh. Perfect. That's awesome. And on this side of the room, on the count of three, a cheer, like what you just saw is amazing. It's like, hooray, okay? One, two, three. Hooray! Okay, now, on the count of three, we're going to have to ooze and the hooray's going. There's no rule that we can't make a little noise in here, so let's get a little volume, okay? And we'll make the people outside of the conference hall a little confused about what's going on in here. Okay? On the count of three, everybody. One, two, three! Hooray! All right. So welcome to Collaborative Spaces. Uh, this is a session on integrating Drupal with Google Drive, Dropbox, and more. Uh, my name is Dave Sawyer. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and on Drupal.org. I'm a solutions architect at a firm in Cambridge, Massachusetts called OHO Interactive. And uh, I'll let my co-presenter introduce himself. My name is James Barnett, and I'm a software architect at Babson College. And I also uh, am teaching some courses at Babson. And it's very exciting. We're actually teaching a Drupal course to some of the undergraduates. So that's pretty exciting to get Drupal into uh, the teaching environment. All right. So the slides uh, uh, for this presentation will be available online, as will be a recording of this presentation. We'll also have time at the end of the session for, for questions. So before we get into the presentation, by a show of hands, how many people use Dropbox either personally or at work? Okay. So for the purpose of the recording, uh, pretty much everyone in the room just raised their hand. Uh, similarly, by a show of hands, how many people use Google Drive, either personally or at work. Okay. Uh, me too. And again, for the recording, pretty much every single person uh, in the room today just raised their hand. And finally, uh, how many people use Google Talk, instant messaging, and or Google Plus Hangouts for video conferencing? Wow. Again, almost every single person in the room. So some quick numbers. Uh, these are just gathered through some quick Google searches. but. Uh, in general, uh, it's estimated that today about 120 million people use Google Drive. And by comparison, uh, some of the numbers I found uh, estimate that there are about 200 million Dropbox users out there. Are there any Canadians in the audience by any chance? Cool. Population of Canada, 35 million. <laughs> so this gives you a sense of the scope of how many users out there are using these massively deployed services to collaborate on documents and share files. And so the premise of the talk today is that Drupal provides the platform. It's, it's, our, it's not only our CMS, it's, it's the place where we create the exchange of information. It's, it's the user experience and it stores our web content. But cloud services like Google Drive and Dropbox store our documents and files. And services like Google Talk and Google Plus Hangouts facilitate our real-time communications. And up until more recently, these three different pieces have been pretty much separate. In other words, you can imagine having one browser tab open, connecting into a Drupal site where you might connect with others, another browser tab open on Google Drive or editing a document, and then another window to have a chat or a video conference. So the premise is that there's an increasing need to bring these platforms together to improve the user experience and increase collaboration. I think these systems should all be BFFs. <laughs> so we take these kind of three pieces, what I'm calling the web platform, the documents piece, and the conversations piece, the real-time communications, and collectively I'm referring to these as what we're calling today collaborative spaces. This type of concept of a collaborative space can apply to lots of different types of Drupal sites. User communities, online learning platforms, social communities, intranets, portals, publishing platforms, etc. Basically any type of Drupal site where the users need to connect and share information with each other. So why? Why are we doing this session? Why, why is this important? Well, number one, improved collaboration between your Drupal site's users and content contributors means better engagement of those users with your site. Number two, increased accessibility. Your site's files 
can be synchronized to, to the desktop and available across mobile devices. All of us that raised our hands before that use Dropbox know how easy it is to load a file into our Dropbox folder and have that synchronized everywhere, instantly on our phones and our desktop computers. Why not in our Drupal sites as well? Reduce costs associated with infrastructure and web hosting. By putting our files out on these cloud services that are designed to store massive amounts of files and to synchronize those files for us, we don't need to put them up on our web servers, which are really designed to be web servers, not necessarily document storage systems. Increase site performance by moving our documents off of your little old server and let the cloud storage services serve them and store them. Has anyone ever had an issue with their production hosting environment where you're just running out of space on the server? Yeah, a number of people raised their hands. So uh, the idea is that by looking at the Google Drives of the world, we can let the Drupal site be good at it, what it's doing, serving up web pages and web content, and let the Google Drives of the world be good at what they're doing. Also, high availability, these cloud providers, Google Drive, Dropbox, have massive, massive networks with redundancy, reliability, and backups. And they're typically much, much more powerful than the production server of, of a typical Drupal site. So there are numerous contrib modules on Drupal.org today that integrate with these services in a variety of ways. As we always say in Drupal, there's a module for that. But despite the widespread usage of these cloud services, the Drupal Contrib module adoption levels are, are relatively low, and many of the best practices are still being established. So what I mean by that is if you go to any, any module page on Drupal.org, uh, you do see an indication of usage, the number of sites that are reporting usage of the given module. And you'll see the modules that we're going to show today as examples uh, have relatively low numbers. So it is, it is our impression that there's still quite a ways to go to bring these types of integrations to Drupal. There will actually be a demo later in this session today where we'll show you some, some actual working examples. There's also plenty of opportunities to get involved because of this. Here's a shot of a good old fashioned issue queue we like to see. So at a high level, what is it like to integrate with Google Drive with your Drupal site? From a development perspective, if you've never uh, integrated with Google before, uh, they have something called the Developer Console. I'm not going to get into too many of the, the development specifics here, but basically you, you, you log into this console with a, with a Google account and you register an application. And by doing so, Google provides you with the credentials, such as API keys, et cetera, that you need to integrate with your Drupal site. It's actually really easy to do, uh, pr pretty straightforward task for most uh, web developers. And there's Great documentation on this online. So a few considerations. Um, it's easy to set up new projects with the, with the Google Development Console. Um, there's good documentation. And a tip, set up and use a, a separate test Google account. And I say this uh, out of a mistake I made when I was first uh, starting to play around with this stuff. I used my actual uh, Google account. And uh, that ended up being a bad idea. Another uh, piece to keep in mind is that APIs do change. Whether it's Google, a large company like Google, or some other small system uh, that provides an API, whenever you're doing development against a third-party API, they, of course, can change that API at any time, which means that your stuff, through mo no fault of your own, can break. More on that later. So let's talk about a specific example of integrating Google Drive with Drupal. This module, Drugal, is actually created by James, who you see here. And what it does is it demonstrates usage of the Google uh, API. It allows you more specifically to list, move, create, and share Google Docs all from inside of Drupal. So the example I gave at the top of the talk today about having different browser tabs open, this sort of eliminates that need and allows you to interact with Google Drive, again, all inside the context of a Drupal site. And for the designers of the world, we're able to create in engaging digital experiences instead of a sort of a bland document view that you see on a Google Drive interface, we can create a custom design interface and pull some of those doc document listings into that. <coughs> this module works with organic groups and creates a number of possibilities for integrating with group workflows. And it's available for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. 
This module will be showcased in the demo a little bit later in the talk. It was developed at Babson College, where James works, and they've been beta testing Drugal to service the Babson community by bringing document collaboration to their classes and social groups at the institution. So, lessons learned and some considerations. As I mentioned before, APIs do change, and that's exactly what happened to, to James here. He can elaborate on that. Google actually changed the XML structure after the module was first developed. In other words, when the, when the Drupal site is communicating with Google servers via the API and pulling in those lists of documents and files, Google is sending that information back in a structured way in XML format. And the module is, is expecting that XML to come back in a certain way so that it can parse it and use it. Google changed that XML structure, which essentially sort of breaks the module. Um, that has been resolved, but it's, it's sort of a lesson learned in, in building against a third-party API. Um, the Google Docs XML uh, it return isn't meant for listing all uh, documents on one page or, or block. Um, it's really geared towards listing folders or documents within a specific folder, and again, you'll see this in the demo. So that's sort of a high-level uh, thought on what it's like to integrate, integrate with Google Drive. Um, again, at a high level, what would it be like to integrate with Dropbox? Similarly to Google Drive, there is a, uh, a process of registering your application, or in this case, your Drupal site, with Dropbox. Much like Google, very well documented, lots of information online that you can read for how to do that. It's a simple process that allows you to use their API. There's good uh, documentation available. And again, as before, I do recommend, if you're going to play around with this, to set up a separate test Dropbox account if you can. Full access to that Dropbox account will be needed, so you might not want your personal Dropbox files uh, exposed in a uh, web prototype. Um, another piece of advice is to understand the way Dropbox calculates disk space quotas, that should say, particularly with shared folders. A lot of you use Dropbox, as we found out before, and uh, you may know that uh, when you have a shared folder, uh, that typically counts against both of your uh, allowed amounts of disk space in that way. So just to be aware of that as you set up shared folders that your Drupal users can upload content into. There are two key Drupal modules for, for Dropbox integration, a user-oriented integration and a multi-purpose integration with site-wide support. I'll be commenting on those specific modules in just a couple moments. Um, at a high level, what are the benefits of doing this? By leveraging Dropbox's web interface and, and mobile apps, you can allow your users and, and, and content contributors to upload and share files with your Drupal users. So I'll give you a very simple example. Let's say uh, you're here at the conference and you pull out your smartphone and you take a photo and you just want to make that photo now available in your Drupal CMS. The old way of doing that would be to take that photo, email it to yourself or to your web producer, have that person then open up a Drupal site, log into the Drupal site, do a file upload so that it's in the Drupal site, and after all those steps, that file can be accessible. Uh, with Dropbox integration, by using the mobile app on your smartphone, you simply move that, that photo that you just took with your phone into a, a Dropbox shared folder and you're done. It's instantly synchronized to Drupal. So it creates a lot of new possibilities to streamline workflow for content contribution as well. The other benefit, of course, is that Dropbox provides automatic synchronization. So just by adding a file into a Drupal site, that file can be automatically synchronized to all of the devices that are associated with that shared folder. Lots of possibilities there. One of these modules that, uh, that you can use to provide Dropbox integration um, is called the Dropbox integration module. There's the project URL on the slide. This is a user-oriented integration. It allows users to have a send file page where users can send a file directly to a Dropbox account. It's a, <clears throat> relatively straightforward implementation. It's stable and available for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. And it was created by Andrew Berry, the senior architect at Lullabot. Um, the other notable module is a module called the Dropbox Client Module. <clears throat> Excuse me. It provides a multi-purpose integration. This means uh, Dropbox folder navigation, file downloads, search for files and folders in Dropbox, et cetera. Um, and basically where it can be handy is it provides blocks that you can easily drop into a page template. And those blocks would have listings of Dropbox files. Um, it also has a, the concept of a site-wide Dropbox mode. So the idea is that uh, Dropbox files can be made available across the site in that way. Um, no per group support for organic groups at this time. Um, would love to see that. And 
may uh, help to contribute to that as well. That would allow uh, individual shared folders per group in a Drupal site. Okay, so at a high level, we've kind of talked about why these types of integrations are useful and what it looks like just at a high level to integrate with Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, now let's talk about what are some specific useful things you can do once you connect with these services. And this is the cool stuff. So one thing you can do is you can automatically create nodes for your Google Documents. And depending on your workflow or what you're trying to do, this could be a handy uh, workflow. The idea is that you create unpublished nodes that represent reference references to docs in Google Drive. In other words, by establishing this link, someone goes into Google Drive, creates a new word processing document, and then Drupal will automatically create a corresponding unpublished node in the Drupal site. And that might be list, uh, useful, for example, for uh, creating a, a view that automatically lists all unpublished nodes with a certain tag or certain criteria. In this way, you sort of are bridging the gap between documents created in Google Drive and nodes that represent those documents in Drupal. Um, the files are not downloaded. The nodes only contain references back to the Google Drive documents in this case. Um, this module is in alpha status, so there's work to be done, but um, it's a good choice for people who are looking to create that type of a workflow. Another thing you can do is insert web form submissions as new rows in a Google spreadsheet. This one's so simple, but really, really useful. If you ever uh, use web form and you want to export that web form data, what a lot of people do, the web form module, of course, allows you to export your web form submissions in CSV format or TSV format. You would then download that exported CSV file, load it into Excel, and you know there you're in a spreadsheet. What this does, it sort of bridges the gap a little bit. It allows you to essentially click export to Google Drive, and in a, in a click, your web form submissions are made available in a Google spreadsheet. From there, you can create charts and graphs and analyze the submissions, some really cool stuff. Um, it's super easy to implement. Um, it's worth noting that this provides an, sort of an on-demand export as opposed to something that's automatically synchronized back to a spreadsheet in that way. Basically, it saves clicks, it saves steps. This is a, just a quick screenshot here. You can see this is the web form screen where you would normally download web form results to uh, Excel or, or a CSV file. You can see it adds the additional option there to send to Google Drive. Very straightforward. Another thing you can do, allow your Drupal users to browse and upload files into a Dropbox account. Uh, that can be an individual user's Dropbox account or a site-wide Dropbox. You would use one of the uh, Dropbox modules I mentioned just a short while ago to accomplish that. That's the Dropbox client module for Drupal 7. Another thing you can do, not necessarily a benefit to the end user, but a benefit nonetheless, is to use Google Drive or Dropbox as a destination for your backups. Really cool. Many of us use the Backup and Migrate module to, to make backups really simple to uh, download from our Drupal sites. What this does is it extends the Backup and mi Migrate module and allows you to specify uh, Dropbox, in this case, as a backup destination. So if I wanted to do, do a big backup of, of the site instead of downloading that to my, my laptop, I just click a button, it sends it into my Dropbox. Again, the benefit of that is by doing that, that, that backup file is automatically synchronized to the other devices that I've set up with my Dropbox account. Another thing you can do, no Drupal module is necessarily required, but it's another possibility, using uh, these services to actually serve images and media. Uh, as you know, with a, with a service like Dropbox, you can share any file, which creates a public web you know, URL for the file. Um, and in some cases, it may be useful to let Dropbox or Google Drive host and serve specific media, media files. Uh, particularly if you're on a lower tier hosting account and traffic and storage uh, quotas or bandwidth usage may be a factor for you, this, this could be a handy way to offload some of that. Just be aware of traffic limits if ap applicable with these services. Another thing you can do is extend a content type with a document field. Uh, this particular module, G Drive Sync, uses a custom field type to connect nodes to Google Documents. Um, it's really just more of a simple way of just saying this node is associated with this Google document to provide a, a, a synchronization in, in that way. Uh, not, again, not pulling the Google documents into Drupal as much as associating Drupal pages or nodes to corresponding documents. 
Another very simple one, but very handy. At the top of the session, we established that pretty much every single person in this room uses Google Drive. If you have a website with files on it that users typically download to their computers, you can use this module, which is called Save to Drive. That what it does is it adds a button next to the file link and allows that person in a click to, to save that file to their Google Drive. In other words, in, instead of clicking to download the file to their computer, they click the Save to Drive button and provided that they're logged into Google, the file will automatically be sent into their Google Drive account. Basically just making it a little bit handier for, for the users of your site that do use Google Drive and would prefer to put the file in their drive rather than downloading to their computer. Here's a screenshot kind of showing a simple example of what that looks like. You can see the Save to Drive button appearing where the file link would normally show up on a page. Another thing you can do is, is create an embedded document content type. This particular module, GDoc field, uh, adds a new formatter to the file field using the field API. Um, this one is really awesome. It displays PDF files, Microsoft Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, or Excel spreadsheets directly within a Drupal node. In fact, the author of this module is in the audience today. I want to give him a nod. Jeff is over there. Thank you, Jeff, for this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, let, let, me, let me tell you, this is, this is actually really, really handy. There are many types of files that you might make available in your site that aren't able to be displayed in the web browser. And a good example of that is a Word document. Imagine you have a .doc file and there's a Drupal page that links to that file. Typically when we click on that file, what happens? It downloads to our computer, right? What this does is it basically leverages a service that Google provides for free that actually will render a preview of that document. So formats like Excel, Word, PowerPoint, PDF, anything that Google Drive can, can understand and display, uh, but that would never be able to be seen in a web browser, this gives you a way to allow your users to preview them, click through the pages, see what the page looks like before they download it. And in some cases, sometimes we want to just take a look at a document. We don't necessarily want to download the whole document. This provides a way you can do that. Another thing you can do is to create a group files repository. Uh, this is particularly useful for sites that leverage organic groups. Um, with Dropbox, you have the added benefit of the local backup on your computer of any files that go up into the Drupal site. Those files automatically syn synchronize back to Dropbox. You can use the module OG Drive for this. It associates organic groups with Google accounts and lets group members share documents. Each group can be associated with one Google account and all the documents in the Google account drive are shared with all the group members. And lastly, um, not necessarily a technical integration, but seems worthy to note in a conversation about using Google Drive on Drupal site development, is using Google Docs to document your site. We certainly do this at our firm at OHO Interactive in Cambridge. Um, Google Docs make great collaborative documents with the ability to comment and see and work on documents in real time. We actually use these for technical documentation for site builds. There was a session on this very topic at DrupalCon Prague last year. So it's demo time, and I'm going to turn things over to James right now, who's going to show you a little bit what this stuff looks like, including a glimpse of uh, some of the real-time communication pieces with Google Hangouts integrated to Drupal. Thanks, Dave. First, I'd like uh, the Babson team, I see them in the back, to raise their hands. I want to give a shout-out to them. They did a lot of work on what you're about to see, and I want to give them credit. And uh, it's been a lot of work and a lot of fun working with Google. I love the Google universe. I'm going to... Uh, take the time to tell you the truths about working with the Google API as well. So I want to say up front, I love Google, I love the tools, I love all that, but I'm also going to be pointing out some of the frustrations along the way, and, and I, I definitely poke at them a little bit. But um, how many of you have tried integrating with uh, some of the Google, Google stuff out there? How many, how many of you find it frustrating sometimes? It is sometimes, it is sometimes. They change things on you and... and and uh, they're always keeping things up to date and, and giving you the best new stuff. So it is changing all the time, and, and it can be frustrating. We're going to get into that into some detail. First, I'm going to show you some of our stuff. I hope it looks okay on the side there. What we have here is um, something we have at Babson. I work at Babson College as a software architect. And we have, um, we have classes, as you can expect at a college, and also... Uh, social groups like the soccer, you know, soccer club or, 
you know, different sports teams. So we have organic groups for the classes and the social groups. And then for each of these classes, we also have what we have here. This is a uh, chat drawer. We call it a chat drawer. And actually, I already have it expanded a little bit. You can see each of the organic groups has a drawer. This is what we call a drawer. It's, it's just the uh, jQuery accordion, you'll notice, that's been themed. And you can see uh, each of the groups has all the members listed. So, um, you know, if, if there was a, let's see if I have a, a real uh, course here. Actually, mine, mine I finished teaching a few weeks ago, so it's already scrolled off. But let's pretend this is a course, a real course. And these are the members of the course, right? And you can see this student, let's pretend test 10 portal is a student, and I can see they're online. They're green, right? And I can click here. Uh, we also have a button start chat. Uh, and we can just, you know, throw a chat over the wall. First, in a live demo, which I hear is dangerous. And this uh, looks like it went offline, so let me. In case the internet is off, I, I did record this as well. But um, yeah, live demos are dangerous. This is what I've heard. So um, anyhow, that does usually work. It worked two minutes before, of course. Well, let me just refresh the screen. You guys can do one of those hoorays again right now if you want. There you go. <laughs> what does the left-hand side of the, the group say? A Ooh. And here we say wow or something. <laughs> Hooray. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to show. I was worried about this. I had this prepared just in case the Internet or something was, was going funny. Let's show this demo this way. Welcome to the demonstration. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk over it. You can see I've got the Princess Leia effect. And <laughs> you, can see, uh, you can see my gray hair kind of glistens. Remember that 1980s uh, cinematography? I've got that, uh, that, that special effect. Um, but you're going to see pretty soon the chat drawer is going to open up. And uh, we're going to send chats across. Um, here we open the chat drawer here. You can see the different uh, organic groups. You can look inside the different drawers. And um, we're going to send a chat across in a second. It might be faster for you just to assume it, I suppose. But what you're also going to see is you can start a Google Hangout this way also. And um, you can see the, there are three buttons there when you open up the chat drawer. And you can see uh, one is the green button for chat, one is to send an email, and one is to start a, a Google Hangout, or we're calling it a Droogle Hangout. And it's pretty cool. Um, you're going to see a chat go across here, and uh, of course, when it's not live, it worked fine. I don't know if it's the internet or what here, but you're going to see. Um, the chat's going back and forth. And what's special about integrating with the Google universe is you have chat, you have Hangouts, and it increases collisions between your community. So if you have Babson students and they're trying to um, have a class and they want to exchange ideas during a class, maybe they'll go into a, a forum and they'll start exchanging ideas in the forum. We have very rich uh, forums, as you can expect, in a business school, and they're discussing uh, business cases. And then uh, maybe they see someone's online. What we have here is you see the uh, little bubbles next to each person's username? We've overridden uh, theme username so that there's a chat bubble next to each, each username. And you can see for every mention of a username, you can see who's online, who's not. And that's useful. If you're reading, this is a discussion board you're seeing right here. Uh, if you see a post in the discussion board, this is completely custom. Um, if you see a post that you're interested in and they're online or the professor's online, 
you can see there online and send them a chat and, and say, hey, that's a really great post. Why don't you tell me some more about it? And you've socialized your Drupal installation. The other thing that's really cool is we use one installation as the core installation, right? So you can actually have multiple Drupal sites connected to the base Drupal site, and you can have chats between the Drupal sites. So if you go to one of your other portals, we have a student portal, we have a faculty portal, uh, and so if they're on a portal and they read some new announcement, they can, they can still have a chat with any of our other Drupal sites, or they can start a, a Google Hangout with any of the other Drupal sites. And that kind of collaboration is, is something companies sometimes pay for. Babson at one point was talking about ripping up the roads through the, through the college uh, and setting up, you know, beautiful path and, and seating. And, and they were trying to, trying to uh, not create a larger smoker's lounge, but create a, you know, a large area where people could interact and you know, they'd sit and they'd talk to each other. And it's a heck of a lot easier to not rip up the entire campus, but to, you know, to make it so that you can just chat with anybody at any time. And to have it so that hook username is replaced with this chat experience, it's, it's pretty powerful. And uh, I think you're going to see at the end of this video, let's see, if, let's see where it's at right now, uh, you can go into a, a, a Hangout. What happens is you click on, uh, let's see if I'm, I'm in sync here. It did show it a second ago? Okay, so everybody saw it, good. Um, <laughs> if you click on that, on that yellow button, it starts to hang out, it sends a chat to the other person and they'll also get an email. And if you saw, as I was talking, you, ch you click on the chat and you're instantly in that Google Hangout. And that's very cool. I mean, everybody, how many of you have used Hangouts? Right? So if you're in a, in a Google site, if, in a Drupal site, and any mention of hook username, you know, any, any username on the site, if you can click on that yellow, yellow icon or whatever color you make it, uh, it's all themable, you know, you're instantly in a, in a Google Hangout. And these collisions are what, you know, maybe you'll have, maybe there'll be a great new idea that comes out of it, or maybe a new collaboration. At Babson, we're creating uh, businesses that might spur job, job growth. Maybe more businesses will get created because more, more ideas get exchanged. And that's the kind of thing that, that Google is providing to us if we can ride, ride on their coattails. Uh, Idris had an interesting uh, keynote. He said, you know, maybe we should fear Google. They're scraping all our sites, and why do they need to go to our sites? I see it as, I see that for certain sites, you know, for e-commerce, they're scraping things and stealing traffic, and Google can even sell things to themselves. I, I can see that aspect, but the other aspect is they have these, this great universe of tools. And if we ride on, on on that wave, that's really exciting. We can, we, you can see here, um, we're creating a Google, Google Doc. We're riding on the wave of Google Drive here. This is the exciting new uh, functionality that's coming to Google Drive uh, at Babson. We're making it so you can click on any, any username in there in the chat drawer, or remember, anywhere there's a chat bubble, and you can invite multiple people to a document and instantly be within a presentation, a Google Doc, uh, and be collaborating in that, in that rich Google Drive experience. And um, I think Google Drive is incredible. I mean, you, you can see what other people are typing as they type it. It's all color-coded. And it's just a really nice, nice experience. And if we can get people in our Babson discussions, we're using, uh, it was advanced discussions. We've since, uh, you know, really uh, customized it to death. Uh, but now anybody within our Drupal discussions they can instantly be collaborating in a Google Drive document as well. And um, it, it's just a, it's a very, very powerful experience. So now that you've, you've seen what I'm talking about, I'll go through some of the slides here. So we're talking about Google Drive, Google Talk, and Google Hangouts. That, those are our current integrations. Uh, Another developer is already, we don't know how to use it yet. We have our own single sign-on system, but we know how to do single sign-on with Google as well. Uh, so we can have a sign-on through Babson and Google at the same time so nobody has to log in. There's some tricks there. Um, 
I think it's, if I could, I think it's yeah. important to note too that the, the types of functionality being demonstrated today, uh, this is not being done with commercial proprietary software. This is being done with open technologies, open standards, uh, uh, some contrib modules, some of which we've shown today. Uh, so these are definitely, uh, integrations that, that you can do yourself with your team, depending on the, the extent of the, the functionality you're looking to do. Yep. As, as you can see here, as Dave's saying, uh, Drupal has been published. Um, Jabber has been published, but we still have to publish the most recent version of Jabber. And uh, I'll get into that in a little bit. Jabber is a little bit more complex to set up. Uh, Jabber is the chat functionality, and it requires a Punjab server. And it's a little complicated to set up. Uh, one thing we're we're playing with the idea of Babson because it is Babson of maybe uh, having an open atrium sort of model and maybe monetizing it. We're gonna, we don't know, but there certainly is going to be some something published. Thirty is a version of Jabber published. Uh, we're not quite sure where where it's going to go. We think this is an exciting tool set to have Dr Google Drive, Hangouts, and and uh, GTalk integrated in every Drupal site and you know connecting all your Drupal sites. We think that's pretty exciting. So we are documenting. Uh, and uh, publishing a lot of this stuff. Drupal is here, as, he, as I say. Um, the old version of Drupal, originally we thought that every organic group, every classroom would be pulling a list of documents. And this is a screenshot of a site-wide page of listing a user's documents. The idea here is if you're using uh, Google for Business or Google Education accounts, you can create a pseudo user, and maybe that pseudo user won't be a real person, but it'll be a, like a site-wide user to store documents within. And there's also the idea that every organic group can be connected to a, uh, a pseudo user. So, you know, there's a, a, a document storage area for each organic group, and, and Drupal currently supports that as well. Um, we've updated, I, well, I recently updated uh, Drupal to use the new API, so it's using the client ID and the client secret and the OAuth stuff. Um, now, I, I promised to tell you that I love Google, but there are some caveats. They really don't document things superbly, um, and things change all the time, and it was a bit of a maze. To get Drupal working with the latest API, um, they've got it in SVN, their, their uh, classes and everything to, to use in PHP. Then if you look in the fine print somewhere, it says, this has been moved to GitHub. Then you get to GitHub, you download that, and then it says, you know what, the latest stuff, if you want to use it, you have to, it, this is a very small print, I don't even know where I found it. All the class names have changed slightly, and so nothing works unless you know to change the, the class names a little bit to get your, your stuff to work. So I, love, I, I will sing Google's praise, they're awesome, and it's very organic, and they, they, really, they really spur a lot of innovation, and it's awesome, but it, it is tough to, to uh, chase, chase Google. And it has its challenges. And if anybody wants to get involved in, in helping with these modules, it would be very welcome. It's, it's hard to uh, always, always be on top of all those changes. Um, so um, this is where Jabber is published. And Jabber uses, Jabber is um, what, what this technology, this chat technology used to be called. I think IBM officially has the rights to that name now. And it's really called XMPP to have, have the chatting going on. You know, if you use ADM on a Mac or, or any, any chat technology, it's actually XMPP protocol. There's HTML, and then there's XMPP. You know, th these are uh, not competing technologies, but XMPP is the underlying language beneath. And I'll show you some of the XML that XMPP uses. It's, it's an XML-based exchange of information. Uh, and Punjab server is what mediates all the traffic uh, when you send a message, it, it kind of routes it all, and you have to set it up with some co complex DNS settings, and um, it takes a bit to, to get that set up. It's, it's all published online. Um, here's just some, some more screenshots. Jabber, two people chatting, not during a live demo. And um, we had some performance issues. You, we, we learned you really have to load Jabber and this Hangout stuff asynchronously using JavaScript, I think it was the window.load event that eventually uh, we realized it dawned upon us we had to use. Uh, you, re you really just can't wait for, uh, if, you have, if you have 50 or 75 contacts eventually, you, know, you can't wait for all that stuff to load to have your page come up. We had, for, for a few months, we were struggling with some, some bad load times, but we moved everything into window.load window in uh, jQuery, 
and everything comes up, you know, after the page loads. And it, if you look, Google does the same thing. They they load up their Gmail page, and then you'll notice chat comes in a little bit afterwards. You know, it takes an extra maybe two, three seconds. Um, but this is definitely a picture of how I felt many times and struggling with it, this stuff, no joke. Um, and But it's been, it's been very fun and interesting, it's good projects. I, I was joking with Dave, he thought I should put the slide in, <laughs> where the sidewalk ends, this is where the internet ends. You know, you go, usually you go and you look at Stack Exchange and you're like, thank God somebody saved me today. You know, I, I know how to do this now. Uh, when you're trying to make your own video, good luck trying to make your own video client. Nobody's sharing that information yet. Uh, I'm sure it can be done, but you got to read the original specs. You got to read, you know, the documentation that w was clearly written by PhDs that don't talk to people very often. <laughs> um, and I had to do that sometimes with the Jabber, and it was fun and interesting. But like I, you saw that other slide of the guy with the hair out, you know, in every direction. It, it's certainly. Uh, Certainly challenging. So where the internet ends, it, it does end at a certain point, and, and it's kind of fun as a developer to to plow through that. I, I, you know, we're still riding on Google's coattails, but um, trying to integrate with Hangouts. They want you to use Hangouts right now, and my opinion is there aren't rich, rich APIs for dealing with Hangouts. We kind of use a workaround and, and trickery to get it working with uh, with uh, Drupal. But um, you know, some of the stuff, some of the stuff. The companies aren't really sharing very much yet. Or maybe, maybe it's just they're busy, who knows. Uh, but it is what it is. To get it working with PHP, uh, there's this handshake between, I'm gonna open up for questions very soon, but um, there's, there's a, an RID and an SID, a session ID and what's known as an RID in uh, XMPP. And you don't want to get those things originally in JavaScript because it'll be in clear text in your JavaScript, which is client-side, and people can steal your, your chat session. So what you have to do is you have to create the SID and RID in PHP, and then pass it over securely to the JavaScript. Um, and then the JavaScript can, can pick up where the PHP left off and continue the conversation. And there's some security around the RID. Every time there's a new bit of information passed, the RID increases by one, so it's, it's literally a number. like you know, 5,000 or something, and then the next chat message would be 5,001, and then 5,002. And if there's a gap of two in the RID between messages, the chat will, will stop. Uh, it means that it's not a, a secure session any longer. If, so, uh, for the non-technical people in the audience, um, he's saying that getting this working was really hard. Yes. <laughs> I don't know who of you is technical and who is looking to download and, and install, but... Um, it was fun to develop then. Strophy, I should give credit, is the JavaScript library that I integrated with. Uh, Strophy is a JavaScript library that integrates with XMPP. I'm up talking a little fast because there's a lot to give you. The only definitive resource that's just really awesome on the internet for XMPP is this, uh, this guy, Jack Motif. And he wrote this book, Professional XMPP Programming with JavaScript and jQuery, and he's great. And he is highly available on the internet. Although, don't tell him I said that because, you know, you'll all bother him. But, but he, he was really instrumental in helping me understand some of the stuff. I read his book, and he was, he's on the, uh, Google, the Google forums uh, answering questions. So he was, he was just really awesome. He still is. And um, his book was really well written. It's a really complex subject, and he did a good job. Um, again, every, every username has this effect where you can chat or hang out or... or start the Google Drive stuff. Um, and this is what XMPP looks like. You don't have to memorize or whatever. It's a bunch of XML. Um, and you can see it calls a PHP function I wrote, Jabber get next RID. As I said, it just increments by one every time something happens. Um, this is our interface that one of our developers, uh, Bill Chung, wrote. It's really awesome. You click on uh, the Google Drive. Oh, this is actually Hangouts. You can see every name you add adds to this field here, and then you can start a Hangout, say three people having a Hangout in this case after you click Start Hangout. They get a chat message. The, the sender of the, of the Hangout clicks on this button. They're in the Hangout. You saw it in the demo, uh, the recorded demo. 
And the other person gets a chat, they click on the link, everybody's in the demo all at once. And it's pretty cool. And that's me talking to myself because I only have one webcam and <laughs> I can't manage more than that doing a screenshot. So I wanted to show a couple of things. This is the dull documentation I was talking about where you have to read the original specs of XMPP and it's very dry. And here's the, here's the Google console that Dave had mentioned. Um, I can't show you the credentials page because then you'll see my secret, my uh, <laughs> Google secret. But um, you have to configure some of the stuff, and there's some good documentation around that. Uh, this is the Strophy library, the uh, JavaScript library that is integrated into Jabber, the Jabber module. Uh, this is the Jack Motif stuff. And again, this is, this is the interface here. And you can see this is the dev version. We have Google Drive. You can see, um, you can name, name who the owner is. This is going to be posted soon. Hopefully, it's going to be available. So I got through a lot of stuff. We're going to open up to questions, right? Absolutely. If you could put the, also the, the last slide of the presentation sure. on the screen. So, so just in, in closing then, the, the, the takeaway from, um, from some of this is that all without ever leaving Drupal, people can engage in chat, engage in video conversation, spin up a brand new document, share it with each other, uh, and bring a lot of that collaborative experience into the, the Drupal uh, interface. So uh, at this point, we'll, if you have any questions, there are, there's a microphone in the center of the room so that your question can be heard on the recording. Uh, and for those of you uh, who are heading out, thank you so much for coming. So on the Babson website, did the users, were they required to have Google accounts to log in, or were they all assigned anonymous accounts? Yes, everybody at Babson has a Google account, and we, we force it so that they're able to have conversations. There's an option so that you are not private. Uh, you know, if you get a chat, you, ex you automatically accept that chat. There's no authorization. Is there a way to make it, like you said in the Google for... Um, Education or Google app, Google apps for business, you can create anonymous users or anonymous buckets, whatever you call them. Could you do that for users as well, so people could just log in their normal way without logging in via their Google accounts? We do have the option so they can turn off chat, and it's the same as being offline in, in GTalk, uh, and no one knows that they're ever online. They, they have the option of turning it off, but everybody has a Google account. Okay. All right, That's how you. they're getting their email anyhow at the, at the college, so. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Sure. Hi, uh, Google APIs have some limits and uh, it's usually very easy to hit that limits. So uh, do you have any recommendations on how to, is the best way to increase these limits? Well, I mean, certain things like, like Google Hangouts, for instance, I really wish there was more integration, uh, circles, uh, there's, PHP is, in my opinion, still a second-class citizen in the Google universe. They favor uh, Python and Java. And, you know, you can read the original specs, and they have a lot of XML that you can learn to pass back and forth. And in theory, you could figure it out and write your own PHP library. Personally, uh, that's just way too frustrating. <laughs> I'm sorry, I probably was not uh, clear on the question. I mean, sure. uh, let's say you use the, the GDoc field module for displaying your uh, board files or PDF documents embedded in the Google uh, viewer. And uh, they have some limit. I mean, limits on uh, requesting these APIs. And uh, then it, sometimes it just displays the error message saying that you, you, you hit the limit of request to the API. I, I was I, do you have about a Google this. business account or a Google education account, or are you just a single uh, user? No, it's just a free account. I, I don't think that happens on the Google for Business or Google Education account. Is that, has anybody seen a limit? Yes, thousand a day. A thousand a day? For what? For, uh... That's for maps. I assume it's the same for... Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so this gentleman here says that for Google Maps, you can only make a thousand requests a day to Google Maps. Uh, I haven't, have you seen it with Google Drive? Uh, I've seen it with the Google uh, Viewer, where you can uh, embed your document, like do uh, Word document, using the Google Viewer. 
and the Google viewer doesn't render the document saying that you hit the limit, the daily limit. I mean, I've, we, I've never seen limits in Google Drive or chat, but, um, or Hangouts, but the only advice I have is see if, if upgrading to a business account helps. I, I don't know. Uh, if anybody has advice, Feel free to speak up. It's a really good question. Thank you for bringing it up. It we, we, we suspect that the rate limiting is different on the paid, you know, on the paid Google account, uh, Google for Business, as opposed to a free personal account. But we'll look into that. It's a good question. Thank you. Thank uh, you for us. have to go to the. If you can go to the mic. And. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen in the audience. Uh, I, I didn't know you were answering the question, sorry. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't quite hear. If you, if you could go over to the microphone, I couldn't quite hear all, uh, everything you were saying. Um, I was just looking it up, and it looks like there's 10 million um, hits a day in general. That's allowed. API calls are allowed. But 100 per second per user. So if oh, you're wow. doing more than 100 per second... Maybe there's something in the code that that makes making ex extensive calls. This guy behind you is really fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ten million a day is is, is, is enough for, for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, it's a great question. Thank you for asking. And yeah, thank, thanks for the, the last answer. question. Uh, you demoed the integration of the Hangouts and the G talk into the, the Drupal. So is there any uh, code examples that we can uh, look at or download or as a module or just as a For Which code? one do you want, the Drupal or the chat? Well, the integration of Hangouts and Gchat into Drupal. That, Gchat, uh, you can look at the Jabber module. It's online, and you can download the code, and, and look, you, know, you, can add, you can even sign up to help us with the module. But um, yeah, that's free. The Hangouts stuff we haven't published yet. That's the Jabber module on D.O. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have a bit of a general question about if you're using, if your site uses file entity to like add metadata to files, are there any uh, things you can do to integrate, you know, either Dropbox or Google Drive stuff so that you, you can still use the metadata you're putting in with file entity if you're using, you know, embedded like GDoc field or any of those, those fields? That is an awesome question. I love the idea of using metadata and still synchronizing the files out to the provider. That's not something I've, I've tried. I love the idea. Is that something you know about? It's something we've, we've thought of doing. We're always playing with this idea that we can have this awesome repository of all our documents at the college you know, that just solves all our problems. And you have metadata, and then it sits up at uh, Kaltura or Google. Uh, we're con constantly trying to come up with this ideal solution, but that's a good idea, and we, we, haven't, we haven't eaten that pie in the sky just yet. But if you want to co uh, connect with us on, on Twitter, be happy to continue the conversation on that yeah, one. Yeah, or if you're, if you're a business or college is interested in collaborating on that kind of thing, that, you know, be in touch. Thanks. Awesome. Can you talk about failing gracefully? So you mentioned that APIs change and things break, and do you plan ahead for how you can bring things down when things no longer work properly, perhaps still provide links to the original service so that people can still do their jobs? It's just not on the website integrated with Drupal? Well, we can, we can turn off chat. If, you know, there's rumors always that Hangouts is going to completely replace chat. And we've made it so you can just turn off chat and they'll just be Hangouts. Uh, we don't, nobody really knows if GTalk will live forever. Um, they keep threatening in uh, blogs that it, it might not be there forever. Personally, I don't think that's practical and that it's going to happen because just every, you know, everybody's got a chat client and they have GTalk. And I just think that would be against what Google needs, which is more web traffic and more people you know, using their services. So you never know. But, Failing gracefully. Um, by the way, Jabber is, is a universal protocol that works with any federated Jabber server. It does not have to be GTalk. It can work with Facebook. It can work, Facebook uses XMPP. Um, you can have a private Jabber server. So these are other things you can do is you can set up a private Jabber server or, or have it ready to go with another federated uh, service. I guess I was talking more about the document services. So say you're using the document you know, displaying folders, those sorts of things. If that's no longer available, how do you get people to My suggestion would be to have robust unit testing, 
even on you know on the Sage server, and if anything changes, you'll be notified immediately. <laughs> and then you just got to scramble. I mean, this, this is Google, and trust me, they don't they don't really send out a warnings when they change things. Yeah, but your your question yeah. is, your point is well taken. You know, I think with any uh, API integration, right there there are certain uh, response codes, status codes that come back from the third party service. Uh, so in, in our in our application integration work, we can make sure those are there, make sure that the data is returned in the in the format it was it was uh, expected, and display an appropriate, as you said, graceful uh, error message in the case that the service is down for whatever reason. Just along those lines, I was just curious. Um, <clears throat> I know the best practice tends to be to version APIs, and Google obviously versions their APIs. But did and usually you build that version into your endpoint URL. Um, so did the XML changes ha that happened to you um, happen like without the, the, uh, the no, endpoint changing? No warning. And I joke in my head that one day they had some some interns and they were messing around and. <laughs> And it was weird. It, honestly, it changed. I started trying to fix it, and it changed back. Okay, and it was almost like somebody said, "Oops," and then. <laughs> but it, you know, this, and I think it did change permanently at one point. I had to change it, and it, it was kind of wonky. Um, the other thing is, you don't really oh, don't fall into this trap. You get the XML you get. <laughs> you know how Google Drive they like things uh, you, where you have the folders, and then you drill down. And then you drill down again. That's how you get the XML too. Um, you, I wanted it so I could have the great AJAX experience and have you know all the stuff load at once. And you, they don't give you the XML the way you want it. It's the way that they're using it. And, and you know, again, I love Google, but I, I would have thought that you could have just had one hierarchical structure. The hierarchy was was very wonky. Um, just similar lines to an earlier question, though, uh, the user accounts, and you said, you know, everybody has a Google account. Did you, were you also saying that everybody authenticates with their Google account, or just that they're connected to their Google account? Does that become your authenticator, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, we authenticate, we have a Babson proprietary authentication, but then we also uh, log them in. We log them into their Google chat accounts uh, through through that RID SID combination, and that's I'm I am thinking about the Jabber module that you're talking about. So am I still? <laughs> yeah, Jabber. What you're describing it. That's all the. Yeah, yeah, Jabber. What we we have their passwords. Okay. So this really is only practical if you're in a business or an educational institution, and you have that information. And if you do have a more open system, and you know your users want to type in their password and you encrypt it on your server if they're willing to trust you with that, you know, that, yeah. that's not as likely, I suppose. But for a business or educational account, you do need their passwords. Thank you. You mentioned that uh, there's a way to, uh, like with Google uh, Drive and Dropbox, to integrate multiple accounts or have a like, site-wide account uh, for all of the storage. So. In that case, if you have a single account, how do you store files? Do you create folder per group? And this is where like groups get their space. Can they create subfolders? And how, how does it work? Are, are you referring to the Dropbox integration or the Google Drive? Well, both, but probably Google Drive makes the most sense in this case. So you're saying, how do you have a site-wide account? Well, how do you map things? Is, is there a folder on Google Drive for the group, and this is where what, all what the I files. Decided, what, what I thought made sense was um, we happen to have our classes corresponding to Blackboard courses, and so there's a unique ID associated with each Blackboard course. And then when we were doing this, it was uh, each folder would have a unique ID, so we could figure out which one, which uh, folder to look up in this universal account. The other thing is, if you look in uh, the Google, the, the Google Drive. Um, documentation, what you do is you create an, a, a CCK field, and you can let the user specify the name of the folder. And then you, so you can, you can pretty much tell the system what the folder is for each organic group. Can they create subfolders? Um, or sub, is, is, is so, just a flat Yeah, list? the way it would work is um, if that folder you inputted had documents and subfolders, it would work. Because Google doesn't actually know the difference between a, a folder and a document, and it, it, they're all just markers to something to the you know, to the system. 
And there is also the second option to have a different Google Drive account or Google account for a group as well, or is that not the case with Google Drive? Uh, with Google Drive, you have um, you can associate a different account for each organic group, not a different folder, but but a uh, a different account. Uh, sorry, okay. if that wasn't clear. Mm -hmm. So you would need a different client ID and a different client secret for each organic group. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much, uh, very much for everyone for coming, and that's all for today. Chats, um, the, you know, the chats, we do store it, although some people don't really want us to. The only reason we're storing it is because if you are having a chat and then you go to another page, you know, because you want to talk about this other page and you want to continue the chat where you left off, then you need the chat history to follow you. But it's not because we actually want the data. Um, so. yeah, yeah, the other way we could have done it is if we would have had another window open up and therefore it's not rendered on every page. But that's not the way. Business wanted it. So, yeah. Like you're saying, on every page refresh, we have to go make the connection again, get your history and show it. Yeah, well, my, my specific concern was that many organizations don't want to go and find this reliable, and sometimes it's clear that you don't own the data. So that was my question. What you could do, we, we, we talked about that, we talked about that, but the only, the only thing you can really do is, um, and part of the problem with, with uh, collaborating real time in the document is there really are no backups, right? So we were thinking like once a night to scrape and store it offline. This is something we've been talking about. Um, that's, I think that's all you can do to make sure you still have your document. I mean, there's no version. It's not sure. Checking, checking. Yeah. Well, there are versions of Google logins, right? But, but you're saying what if something happens to it, right? Like, it's not your data. It's, it's up at Google. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you also mentioned the, like, the pseudo accounts that will... Yeah, just you make pretend accounts and associate them with organic groups or a site. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought there was like one account that kind of holds all of the data. No. And this way you can, you, you still have access, you can have this 